The Huskers are ready to go to work. Uh, talking Nebraska football, we got Greg Peterson on the line from Husker Online uh, with, uh, again, Nebraska ready to hit the spring practice field right at the end of March. Greg, how's it going today? Doing good. Nice to have football back. Uh, how about you, Mark? I'm doing well. Appreciate you coming on. Of course, we'll get the breakdown here. This is good stuff. Always love to hear about the personnel. Let's let's start with the uh, news conference with Scott Frost today. Uh, so he set up everyone with uh, what's going on this spring and where he stands. He made a kind of an emotional plea to a certain extent, just talking about the fans and missing the fans last year. And he sure hopes uh, that they're going to be back and he's going to be able to uh, uh, make that part of Nebraska football again because it's such an integral part. Uh, what did you take away from uh, today's news conference? Well, you know, uh, <clears throat> again, it's nice to have everybody back. <clears throat> um, you know, it's it's been hard for everybody since about this time last year. Uh, as far as we got last year was the, the spring press conference, and then everything shut down. So uh, hopefully tomorrow uh, everything goes off without a hitch. And, uh, you know, Coach Frost, uh, you know, he wanted to let everybody know that, you know, the winter conditioning has gone really well. And, you know, he likes what he sees from his guys physically. And, um you know, emotionally, I think everybody's ready to get back on the field again. And, um, you know, this team's got a lot to prove. And, uh, you know, the, the Big Ten, the big news last week was, that, you know, the Big Ten announced that fans were allowed back in, you know, the, the last conference to uh, hold out, uh, not having fans allowed into any venues. And now they can, um, which happened at a great time for Nebraska fans is the baseball team had their home opener and, and swept Minnesota and uh, you know, their baseball team is playing great right now. So uh, all's happy here. Um, you know, fans are excited to get back into Memorial stadium and they will at the spring game here, uh, May 1st, uh, the annual red, white spring game. And, you know, fans took it really hard last year, not being able to go to games. And, you know, I think coach Frost just kind of wanted to welcome everybody back and to, uh, you know, be just, you know, be ready for to, to see Nebraska football. <laughs> kind of at a loss for words. I don't want to, you know, put words into his mouth. But, uh, yeah, you know, it was a hard year for everybody. And uh, let's go. Let's get behind this team. Husker fans, you can get a free Nebraska mask. You just go to Voice of College Football and you register for free. You'll see the uh, – Icon right at the top of the menu bar. Register for free right there. We'll get you your coupon code. You get your free mask, 20% off your first purchase as well, and entered into a $25 gift card. All right. You ready to do some work here, Greg, on the full roster here? Let's start at quarterback. Absolutely. Absolutely. Adrian Martinez, he's gotten so much criticism because he was supposed to be all of that Heisman Trophy candidate, uh, had to suffer through injuries, had a pretty subpar 2019. Last year, he loses his job after a couple of games. He comes back and he started making, I don't want to say all the throws, but he was extremely accurate when he came back. And he just seemed like he had something to prove. Maybe he just gained confidence, something. Man, he completed almost 72% of his passes. Yeah, something just kind of snapped there. I think uh, getting benched and uh, watching Luke McCaffrey take his job. Uh, lit a fire under him. And I, I, you know, I think he might've grown up a little bit there in uh, a couple of weeks. And uh, the big difference now is that we all know that it's his show this year. It's he doesn't have anybody nipping right there on his heels uh, trying to take his job. So, uh, you know, that, that should make things a lot easier on him. I would imagine going into this spring. Um, we didn't get a chance to hear from him today, unfortunately, but yeah, I mean, he should be going in, you know, with all the confidence in the world, the way he ended up last season. And uh, that's kind of the guy that we've been waiting to see. And, um, you know, he's got – if all things work out, he's probably got more talent surrounding him right now at, at every position. And uh, it's time for him to shine. Behind him, you know, you've got you've got a freshman in Logan Smothers who, who – he, he's – the future of the position there at Nebraska. And uh, then you got a, an incoming freshman with, with Heinrich Harburg. 
So uh, yeah, it, it's it's his show, and uh, you know, let, let it's time to see what he's going to do, and uh, you know, it, if he plays well, Nebraska plays well. So yeah, that, that's the quarterback position. That's pretty easy, you know, right there. <laughs> Over 1,000 yards passing, four TDs, three picks, seven rushing touchdowns on the ground, over 500 yards. And considering uh, the shortened season, 500 yards rushing of 5.7 per clip. Uh, nice production out of him late in the season uh, in the ground game. Speaking Thanks. of the ground game, yeah, go, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to say that he just he looked much more confident. Um, I, I think he was a little gun shy a lot of the time there. And, and uh, he was running out of uh, necessity, or running just to run instead of running, you know, as a designed run. And you know, running out of necessity is what I was trying to say. Um, I think once he settled down, and uh, then he can show what he can do when he's not under pressure like that, and uh, he makes those mistakes. And uh, you know, I think he knows right now as well that. Uh, if he can be as accurate as he was showing there at the end of last year, then he doesn't need to run as much. And uh, you don't see those 20 plus rushes a game from the quarterback position, which ends up, you know, five of those end up on the ground bouncing around for anybody to recover a lot of the times. So uh, yeah, I, I'm looking, I'm looking for this team to, uh, or for at least Adrian Martinez to be able to protect the ball much more this year and uh, be much more efficient as, as a quarterback and confidence is what I think is going to drive that. All right, Greg, let's stay on the ground. You're going to have to help us out here because uh, you take Martinez out of the mix as a rusher and just look at the, the backs themselves. Wandale Robinson, even though he was an outside perimeter guy, got so many touches inside on the jet sweep and inside carries and all over the place. Diedrich Mills, he's a sledgehammer. He's gone three touchdowns, almost five yards per carry. So, Quite a bit of inexperience there at running back. Well, yeah, the, you know, losing Diedrich Mills, is, he's going to test the waters in the NFL draft. And, uh, you know, after that, you just don't have much experience coming in. Luckily, with the transfer portal, um, you know, you get Marquis Step in from, from USC. And, uh, you know, hopefully he can be a consistent, uh, you know, carry the ball 15 times a game at least. And uh, you know, hammer out those tough yards inside, and, and stay healthy, and uh, that way he can also help mentor some of these young guys that that are behind him. Um, you know, we saw some flashes from some of these guys. I'm talking about you know Marvin Scott. I'm talking about Ramir Johnson. I'm talking about Ronald Tompkins. These are all guys that we've seen uh, you know a few carries out of, and, and you know some flashes that they look really good. Um, and then also does that open the way also for a Savion Morrison that we didn't get to see at all last year due to injuries and COVID and, and all kinds of stuff. And then uh, a talented freshman come in at Gabe Irvin. So uh, you've got a ton of, of, you know, young, talented guys that just have not had a chance to prove it yet on the field. So, uh, you know, that stable is, is definitely pretty full. It's just very inexperienced outside of, you know, like I said, the transfer uh, a guy like Marquis Stepp, who's played a lot of football, a lot of Division One football in his day already, and um, you know that might be the biggest question mark at the position battle going into the spring. And uh, you know, Nebraska fans are going to have to wait and see what these young guys are going to do, and, and who's going to take the reins as that lead guy. Um, no more Wandale Robinson, like like you mentioned, and uh, you know it's time for these young guys to step up. And I, I know Coach Coach Held's going to have a lot of fun this spring uh, trying to coach all these guys up, and, and it's going to be a, a fun competition to watch. Yeah, we'll stay with Wandale Robinson because he's a big loss, not just a running back, but a wide receiver. Now listed as wide receiver, but he got all those touches as a running back at over five yards per carry. He caught 51 passes in a short season. Eight-game season catches 51 passes. Uh, man, he was on pace for like 80 catches uh, last year. Uh, we've heard so much about Omar Manning. You got Xavier Betts, who only caught 12 passes, but a lot's expected of him. We got to see some flashes of him. Um, your thoughts about the wide receiver core? You know, again, this is another position group that you've got a lot of guys out there, uh, a lot of talent. And uh, if things fall into place like, like you want them to, 
Um, that's why I'm talking, um, you know, with a big time transfer, uh, one of the top two wide receivers out there in the transfer portal, uh, Samari Tori, who uh, should be able to step right in and be that veteran, uh, that guy that's going to be a go to guy. Um, he's, you know, he's going to play on Sundays. You're going to be that guy's going to be a household name uh, in the NFL. Um, and if he can do that, he can come in and mentor these guys and show these guys what to do. And like you mentioned, Omar Manning, you know, we've been waiting to see this guy is another uh, big time, talented, you know, big name that hasn't, we didn't get to see him play much at all or at all really last year outside of one game. And um, all the off season talk has all been positive. So, uh, you know, we're going to see what he can do out there this spring. And uh, then you got, you know, you got Xavier Betts. Um, people got to see what he's po- capable of doing. Uh, you know, he's another big time talent. And uh, if you got these three guys on the field together, like I was saying about Adrian Martinez having some weaponry, look at those three guys. If those three guys can perform like expected, holy cow, that's, that's a tough group of guys to uh, try to cover. Um, and then you throw in some of the other younger guys, you know, and Alante Brown. We want to see him get some more touches. Um, Will Nixon. And then you got some veterans behind those guys. Um, uh, Levi Flack, um, Oliver Martin, and a Wyatt Luer. All three of these guys came in and proved that they can catch the ball and do some good things for Nebraska. So another loaded position group that uh, – it's got a lot of inexperience, but they do have that veteran to help things along, just like the running back. So uh, we can't wait to see what this position group looks like here towards the end of the spring. Falcon in particular showed something, uh, 13 catches and a touchdown. So is Jack Stoll back at tight end? Absolutely. Uh, no, actually, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 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 the bearded mullet, is uh, he's going to the NFL too. So uh, – We'll miss him, but uh, that might be that position group. He's leaving it in good hands because. Uh, well, yeah, with this load of talent coming yeah. in. So is that what it's going to be? It's not going to be somebody already on campus. It's going to be, you know, all these tight ends you've been telling us about for weeks that uh, have been committed and signed here recently. No, absolutely not. You got two veterans that are going to lead the way. Uh, you got Austin Allen and you got Travis Volkelec, two guys that, uh, you know, really came on, you know, midway through the year last year, towards the end of the year. You know, two big time, big, uh, big targets. Uh, Adrian Martinez very cover comfortable with both of them now. Uh, you know, Volkolex, the transfer from Rutgers, who who got a play last year, and uh, you know Austin Allen, an in-state kid out of Aurora, that you know he's uh, going into his senior year, and uh, well, actually, it is his senior year. So uh, yeah, those two guys are going to lead the way, and then you know you add in you know the biggest recruit that Nebraska signed was Thomas Fedoni. Um, you know, everybody can't wait to see what he's going to do. Um, and then, you know, James Carney, another freshman signee from this class. Um, and then you got uh, another veteran, Kurt Raftel. So, you know, another loaded tight end group. And, and all those guys are on campus. Those, those two freshmen are on campus. They're going to be going through spring ball. Um, and then you, you still got another uh, a freshman signee who will be here in the summer and AJ Rollins. So yeah, a, a loaded, a loaded group there too. And just goes along with what I've been saying. Uh, Adrian Martinez got weapons all over the place. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch this offense. Vocalette caught a nine ninety one yards, uh, Austin Allen with 18 receptions and a touchdown. We got uh, Greg Peterson on the line from Husker online. So catch uh, his work, the rest of the staff there at rivals, you know, the brand it's Husker online on rivals. All right, uh, here at the Voice of College Football, please like, comment, share the videos out on the social media because our thought is if you enjoy the content, others will as well. So please share the videos and subscribe right here as well. All right, let's get to the offensive line because uh, everybody likes to hear about the skill position players, but it doesn't happen if uh, the offensive line don't do their job and you're losing three out of five starters. Yeah, you know, you you lose a lot of starts uh, from guys, uh, you know, Brandon Hyamas and Matt Farniak, uh, both, uh, you know, testing out the waters in the NFL draft as well. Uh, Bo Wilson, three guys that played a lot of snaps. He also lose uh, backup center in, in Will Farniak. But, uh, you know, Nebraska still, 
you know, bringing that back, um, you still got you've got four guys coming back that have started D one games already in their career. So it's not like they're leaving uh, the covered bear there. Um, right now, definitely the th- three of the starters right now, um, Cameron Jurgens at center, uh, Bryce Benhart and uh, Turner Corcoran would be your two starting tackles. Um, obviously, Cameron Jurgens has started a lot of games, and uh, the other two guys have started a, a couple now in their career. Um, Ethan Piper, Trent Hickson, a couple of other guys that you're going to throw in there. Um, Piper probably looking like, you know, he's going to lock down a starting spot here at guard. Um, and then you got, you got tons of other young guys, talented guys, uh, you know, uh, Brock Ben. Oh, also throw in there, uh, Norton Newelli, who was a uh, transfer from Colorado state. He's also started plenty of, you know, he started a whole season at Colorado state, his freshman year, um, a big kid out of Syracuse, Nebraska here, um, that went to Colorado state and then came back, um, then, I, like I was mentioning, Brock Bando, a young guy who's uh, hungry to get in there and get some snaps under his belt. Matt Stickerman, um, Brent Banks. You got uh, freshman Henry Lutovsky, uh, freshman Teddy Prozak, Prohaska coming in here. <clears throat> Those two freshmen already on campus here, ready to go through spring ball. So you've got tons of tons of guys. You know, a lot a lot of depth here. Um, young guys. You know, like kind of a common theme here, you know, a lot, a lot of talent, a lot of depth, but uh, not a lot of experience. So, uh, you know, the spring is vital for these guys, and it's going to be vital uh, to see what kind of uh, combinations that, that defense or offensive line coach Greg Austin can put together and what he feels comfortable at it about having a rotation there uh, on the offensive line. And Pro Hoskies, the second rated player in the class to Fedoni, coming in as an offensive tackle, 18th rated player at his position in the country. 